I'm Amber Ross. I am a lawyer in Alaska. I am a senior ag business major with minors in entrepreneurship and leadership. So, like and I was able to do the service ship experience two years in a row. So the summer after my freshman year, 2017, I was in West Point. And in 2018, after my sophomore year, I was in Columbus. So I got to work on projects there. And then this year, Andrew and I came together and kind of created an internship position for me at CEDC. And I got the chance to help mentor four amazing young ladies. Um, and I'm just really thankful for my experience this summer. That's kind of the first thing I said. Um, so, the impact that I feel the girls and their projects had on the communities was really like building a place and building the leisure and recreation in Custer County specifically. And then um, Megan and Haley also worked in Callaway and Arnold. And so I think Callaway, they were again building that leisure and recreation and that sense of place. And then um, in Arnold, they did a windshield assessment and a the housing situation and so they were able to kind of work on the sense of pride sense of place in Arnold and so they were really building a foundation to, for us to bring people back to Custer County so that's kind of the impact I feel that they had on our communities um, and then why does this work matter so as a native from Custer County coming back and getting to witness these girls work in my communities um, it really just filled me with a sense of pride and it reminded me why I love Custer County so much. Um, it, they were really able to help me form words to articulate exactly what is so special about the area and um, kind of re-energized re me to keep working for Custer County and to remember why it's awesome. So I think all of their products have a lot to do. Um, my leadership development. So in the past, I've always been on that peer-to-peer -peer level, um, leading uh, people that are my age in similar situations and helping them through their processes at the same time I was trying to grow. And this year, I was kind of leading from a middle manager position. I was kind of one step below Andrew, but kind of one step higher than the fellows. And so um, I was really able to help them we help lead them and help them grow as people. So um, in talks with Helen and Andrew and with the fellows, I was challenged to listen better, to ask better questions, but also to lead people to the answers that they're looking for, usually through another question. <laughs> so um, I had a great time kind of using the people in the office as my guinea pigs and asking them questions and then having them return and ask me questions. And it was just this back and forth. Um, and so I really feel that I grew as a leader just by being there, just being able to bounce ideas around in the office. So, And then personally, my growth. So um, I had my own RFI, if you will. It's in Ogallala Commons. It's out of Texas. So this was a picture that I took with some friends that I met down at my training in Texas. And um, I think my personal growth was um, just the confidence that I am able to lead people and to make a difference in communities. And so um, as I'm gearing up to graduate college in May, I'm really starting to think about my first real life job. And um, this summer has really given me a lot of experiences to draw from in the future. And so whether that be in economic development or tourism or whatever that's gonna look like in the next couple months, um, I really feel that I have the experiences that I need to go forward. Turn. I'm six foot three and I'm not going to pretend to lean over and uh, that you can hear me. So uh, like she mentioned, I'm Andrew Ambrose. I'm the director for Custer County Economic Development Corporation. I've been in my role for about a year, but I'm blessed to say that I've been involved in this, this RFI internship, service ship, fellowship iteration since 2016. Uh, I'm a prop a proud product of, of this program. And so I, I feel really lucky to have seen the iterations and the growth that this program has offered from the student perspective, but also the mentor perspective. And so I, I definitely want to speak a little bit more to how that's changed and how I think it's produced a lot different results now as it has in the past. So uh, to roll right in, I want to reflect 
on each of the projects that you heard them talk about. And they, they weren't just projects that, that necessarily came out of nowhere. It all had to do with something pertaining to customer economic development. But you see the difference in how many projects were initiated and how many projects were, you know, the, the quote, twinkle in our eye that we had thought about, we had considered, but no one had actually taken forward. And through the gift of, of these four coming into our community, we were able to pull so many of these forward. And Megan didn't talk about the metrics of the barn, but that, that event pulled nearly 300 people to the barn, uh, to a center that typically only gets about 1,700 visitors every year. In addition to that, there was fundraising efforts that piggybacked on, on that. So we can put numbers to each of these things that they accomplished. And uh, it's, it's extremely exciting. Uh, for me, uh, it's a little deflating to know that they're gone now. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's a true testament to the capacity that these students have in creating meaningful change in communities. And all of it is based on, so I, I have a number of theories that I base what I, what I do off of, uh, but it's a, a combination of autonomy, um, ownership, and purpose. And so how do you create this sense of, of need? And how do you transfer that to individuals? Well, everything we did was in alignment with our CEDC plan. And I stole this shamefully from uh, Janet Aidy, who runs an economic development consulting group. And this is the three circle of economic development as it is today. And it's so incredibly relevant to our rural communities. And that's how we classified each of these projects. Most of them fell into the business development, placemaking, or talent development, really heavy on the placemaking and talent development uh, with our intern project, with the barn anniversary. And that's, that's what was up on the wall, is how we affectionately call it. Uh, if in their awesome intro video, there were a bunch of flip charts on a wall. And that's our illustration of what matters to Custer County and what's going to help us forward. And so when we sat down at the beginning of the summer and said, what are we going to move forward in this very finite amount of time that we have? And they pulled all of those projects, all 11 that Megan, Haley, Alyssa, and uh, Angela worked on they all fall in line with something we wanted to accomplish as an organization. And, and they knew that achieving and working toward those projects, they had the support of a board of directors uh, that said, this is what matters to us. And when they sat down and presented that to the board, they knew that it was justified and it was appreciated. For my own growth, uh, it's, it's really hard to be reminded of something you already knew. Um, I, I had a lot of really great experience when I was in, in college and younger, uh, but it's always great to be reminded of the, I, I saw a TED talk that called it the onlyness of a person. And regaining that curiosity for who an individual is, you get so wrapped up so often, I have this to get done, I have this to get done, I have this to get done, especially when you see the same people over and over again, working on the same sorts of projects, trying to push the envelope, it's easy to forget and overlook being in that person's onlyness and rediscovering and being curious about that individual. And what I've seen is I've had you know, five young women come in and really push the envelope on these issues, which has allotted me some time to work on some of these other projects that have slowed and spend more time with these people, being curious about who they are, the goals that they have. And now there's that, that establishment of trust which breeds enrollment. And when you have enrollment, you add more people to your bus. And we've seen not only their projects proceed, but so many other projects that CDC, um, Arnold Economic Development, and Callaway Economic Development have moved forward as a result of just a little bit more effort that these young women have, have brought to us. Our capacity has increased, which is why I'm so scared to see them walk out the door. Um, but they've done a great job of transitioning a lot of these projects as well. And, and now the, the momentum we have in our community is noticeable and people are asking, when are we going to get our interns back for 2020? Because uh, people are submit projects. What I love most about this serviceship, about fellowship, about this experience is from the community perspective, we don't get these sorts of touch points with students often, especially within the university system. They may come visit, they may hear about what's going on, 
But to my knowledge, there's no other way to get these high achieving students into our communities, working on these sorts of projects, taking ownership, being autonomous, gaining competence, and being confident in stepping into this whole new realm that they don't get to experience, uh, you know, at, at an institutional level here at the university or other other sorts of education. Here, they're, they're thrust into you have to learn how to get this done. I will give you every tool that I can, but you have to go find the answer. And that's what's created really meaningful experiences, not only in our community, but I heard it a lot in all the other communities as well. Um, they were given the responsibility and, and the autonomy to go out and pursue these things and know that there is a result that more than just them get to enjoy. We're talking about something that has that multiplier effect, that communities get to enjoy, people get to enjoy these things, that, and that's what makes it so meaningful. And I've never, ever had a student work for me that wasn't perfectly described by this sentence. And that's what gives us as, as mentors this free reign to say, go out and do this thing. Because you've been given this great gift of education through the university system. You've experienced the, the coaching and the academy. And you've had other experiences that shape who you are and the way you see the world. We want to tap into that, channel it in a way that you create outcomes that we would have never dreamed of. People were talking about this barn event and making comparisons to the Eclipse event. Broken Bow was right in the line of that Eclipse event back in 2017. And people were making mentions just because of the sheer traffic flow. We would have never said the barn's 10th anniversary can be as big as the Eclipse, but those two students walked in and said, why not? They had no you know, preconceived notions about what it could become, only what it could be. And, and that's what we're, we're so happy to get year in and year out, as long as I've been a part of this, this experience, these students know how to get real work done, and, and they want to see their, their efforts pay off in a way that, that most internships don't get. And lastly, what can this internship become? And, and it's something, like I said, I've been involved with this internship so many times over, um, and, and I see such benefit. And it changes each year from economic development to tourism uh, to, to dipping into education. And Amber talked about Ogallala Commons. And again, another shameless steal from another organization. Uh, but they've developed these, these commonwealth, these key assets of a community. And what I see each year is that the projects these work on fall into one of these 12 buckets. And this is the wholesome look at a rural community or any community across the country. And what I see is that as, as we have students come into our communities, they get to work on one of these, if not more of these issues. And as we have this concerted focus by young people who understand the dynamics, who are highly trained to be ingrained in a community, work on each of these things, our rural communities don't have to worry about survival. We have to worry about how are we going to fit all these people that want to live in our communities. You know, we, we touched on sense of place, history, leisure, recreation, and education just in this summer. And, and I see a definite need for other communities to find these, these talented students, the ones that have rural roots, and, and allocating those resources to building our rural communities that, that so desperately need that, that invigoration, um, those new ideas. It's cliche to say, but young people do bring new ideas and energy. Um, and, and I think that goes a really long way for a lot of our communities that participate in this program. And I've talked about momentum. So many things in a rural community are volunteer-led. Um, Dr. Lindsay Hastings has a statistic that 56% of management positions are held by people 45 and over. How do we prepare these young people for stepping into those roles? It's by giving them experience. How do we assist these volunteers in moving big efforts like a 10th anniversary celebration or um, you know, making a, a key asset more um, visible in our community so that more people can enjoy it, more people come to our communities? That's where having these students come in and, and for a very short time, we maximize the amount of effort. And we give those committees, those volunteers, 
the resources they need to be competent and confident in moving forward on that issue. Whether that's surveys and research, we talked about you know, some of the surveys focus groups that went on in all the other communities. That's such a huge asset when we try and tell our volunteers that are trying to advance an, uh, a movement or some sort of change in our community, we have something to back it up. We just need you to go and, and mark it that this is a thing that we need in our community and that's what makes that change happen. And, and so I, I can't say enough about what this, this fellowship does, not only in our community, but every community, in focusing that effort that, that we get these talented students for 10 weeks, and I would argue 10 weeks isn't enough. Um, <laughs> but, but it's such a gift to, to bring students in and have this sort of practical experience in the hopes that, of course, they begin to grow and they identify and they, they have a soft spot in their heart where one of my interns from, from last year actually sent me a picture when she was driving through Broken Bow of a taco truck that she enjoyed most. That's the kind of identity that we want to generate um, with these young people in our community. And I think so far we've been doing a good job. So thank you and questions.